So most of us have been in the zone before where we're just not thinking, we're playing at our absolute best. It feels like every single shot is going in, every single move is working. And we've seen all the greats in this mental state as well. It's when the best performances happen. And as hoopers, really just humans in general, we crave this. This is where we perform our best, so we always want to get here. And it literally takes our play to a new level. It's night and day. And I truly believe that many times, this is what separates the best players. So if you have player A and player B, they're both equally skilled, right? They shoot the same, they make the same moves, etc. But player A gets in the zone a lot more than player B. They can access this flow state better than the other. Well, player A is going to be a lot better. They're going to make much bigger strides in their career because they're constantly playing to a higher level of their ability. And honestly, to get in this zone, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is put in the work. No, I'm completely kidding. This is this is just not true. But this is what you hear a lot of times when you ask people how to get into the zone or how to access this flow state better. It's like, yeah, if you work more, you're going to be more confident. Boom, it's that easy. Reality, it's not. It's way more complex than this, way more deep. So you're probably going to need a full breakdown like this to understand what it is, how you access it, and then how you can train to access this flow state even more. So let me show you how you can get into the zone more often. Let's get it. So I'm going to start off by giving you guys the tools that you can use to get into the zone. Some of these may work for you better. Some of these may work not as well, but I want you guys to add all of these to the toolbox. So number one is your level of arousal. So basically how hyped up you are. Think about this on a spectrum, right? At the lowest end, you're not hyped up, you're tired, you don't really feel motivated to go into a game. You're just like, all right, you know, F this. On the other end of that spectrum, you're crazy hyped up. Maybe not even anxious, it can be anxiety, but you're just so ready to go. Like, it's like you just drank 500 milligrams of caffeine, you're sprinting out on the court and you're just so ready to play that game or play that workout. Now, the thing about this is that we all operate best on different parts of the spectrum. Most of us will obviously not operate best on that super low side or that super high side. So it's going to be somewhere in the middle, but that's still a pretty big range. Now, the thing is here, when we're too hyped up, we lose some fluidity, right? We get a little bit tense. It's hard for us to kind of relax and play comfortably. So if we're all the way on one side of this, this is the sympathetic nervous system that's just dominating. So all we really care about is going as hard as we can, as fast as we can. We're kind of tensed up. On the other side of things, this is the parasympathetic nervous system that's dominating. We're not gonna have that level of arousal or excitement. And we all know why going into a game super tired or just bored is probably not the best thing to do. So you have to manipulate this spectrum to find what's best for you. Maybe you find that you work better when you're a little bit more excited or aroused going into a game. So you find ways to hype yourself up. Maybe you find that it's hard for you to get into the zone because you're typically tense, right? A little bit too hype. So you find ways pregame, maybe listen to more calm music, maybe laugh a little bit, be lighthearted to slide yourself down this spectrum towards the more calm side. So this is always a spectrum that you're just gonna be sliding back and forth on, trying to find the level of excitement that works best for you to slip into that zone. Number two is psychological momentum. Now we call this confidence sometimes, but I truly believe that this is a different concept. And it's basically where one small win leads to the next, leads to a bigger one, leads to a bigger one. So think about form shooting, right? When we come into the gym, we get those form shooting shots up, we start close and we move back and we move back and we move back. I would actually call this psychological momentum shooting and I usually do because the idea here is not that we're getting our form right, we're actually shooting with a different form here, but that's a different conversation. But it's more so that we're just creating that momentum we make a close shot it's an easier shot so we make more of them then we start to back up we start to feel ourselves more we back up even more and by the time we get out to that three-point shot we already have psychological momentum built up so this is one reason why pregame workouts can be good just to build up that psychological momentum get in those easy shots but this can also be done over the course of a game right there's always something to be said about a player who comes in the game starts with a layup right maybe they get to the free throw line we hear all the time from players who maybe started a game cold and then they heat up it's like yo i just had to get to the free throw line i had to get an easy bucket i had to get a good pass to my teammates and by creating these small wins they eventually add up and create momentum and that makes it much easier to get into the zone last thing i'll say about this think about when you come out and you make your first three shots versus you miss your first three shots you're way more likely to get into that flow state into that zone if you make those first couple of shots or if you just get a few wins as you're getting that game started. The third one is looseness and tension. And this one kind of goes with the first one with excitement, so I'll keep it relatively short. But I think about this mainly in the context of pregame, right? Your mindset as you're getting ready for that game. You look at some players, you know, the Steph Curry's of the world who are just super lighthearted. They're kind of goofing off before the game because that's what works best for them. They get loose. They get 
having fun, right? And this helps them get into that zone because they play more in this style. Whereas some players, probably the more athletic ones, probably the ones who are operating better on that higher side of the spectrum in terms of excitement, they're really locked in, right? They're listening to really hype, motivational music. They're in the corner of the locker room with their headphones on, just trying to lock in. They're not talking to anyone. And to me, that's what I would call a more tense side of things. Now, this doesn't literally mean that they're playing tense, but some players actually operate better on this side of things, whereas some players operate better on the loose side of things. Personally, I operate better when I'm having fun before a game. I think most people do, honestly, just because of the nature of basketball. And I think probably too many players scoot towards this end, towards the more tense, locked in side of things because they feel like that's the standard. Whereas some of the best players that I've been in the locker room with or that I've talked to are actually a little bit more loose going into that game. But again, find what works for you. The next one is difficulty manipulation. So this is a very interesting one. Now, the key here is that to get into the flow state, we need an optimal level of difficulty. It needs to challenge us, but not be so difficult that we're basically like, F this, I don't even want to play. So if a game or a workout is perceived as too easy, your mind usually won't spend the energy getting you into this flow state. It's like, why do I need to do this and spend the resources getting you into the zone? If you can do this anyways, you don't even have to get into the zone. So we need a good manageable amount of difficulty to actually enter the zone. So if it's too easy, give yourself challenges, right? Maybe you're playing a really crappy team. Maybe you're still winning, but you're just playing badly because it's so easy. You got to create challenges for yourself. For example, I got to shoot 60% from the field. I got to get to the rim X amount of times. I got to get six assists or make 10 good passes to my teammates. Maybe it's I can't let my man score at all. So giving yourself these challenges that are difficult enough to actually get you into that flow state will allow you, even when the competition is below you, to enter that zone. Right. Now, You're going to play with people who aren't necessarily always on the same level, but you can get, I always got something out of playing pickup. I didn't care who it was against because it was never about them. During that, I was playing at LA Fitness every day, but work on something that day. Like someday it may be like I'm playing against the most athletic guy and I'm going to drive left that whole day. The, my left hand's my weakness. Or I'm, I'm not playing with a good group. So every time it's going to be off the dribble three, like I'm going to work on just my off the dribble threes. You can get benefits out of that too. Now, if a game is too difficult, then you're going to want to break this down into smaller wins, more manageable, easier wins. So rather than, all right, let's win this game against the best team in the area, which may put a little bit too much pressure on you. It'll be more so like, all right, let's get through this first quarter with a limited manageable amount of turnovers, or let me get up the court super composed these next two or three times. So it's breaking these super difficult challenges into more manageable ones that are going to help you enter that zone, add up some psychological momentum, and eventually get into the flow state. Next one here is communication. So this goes for two things, internal communication and external communication. Internal is more so self-talk, right? It's how we're talking to ourselves, what we're saying in our mind to ourselves. And this has to be super positive and reaffirming. You're not putting too much pressure on yourself. You're telling yourself, hey, I'm a good player. Like these shots are gonna go in. Let's get a little momentum going here. And externally, it's how you're talking with your teammates. I truly believe that there's a social component to the flow state. So when you feel in harmony with your teammates, you guys are all clicking on the same page. It makes it much easier for not only you, but the entire team to access the zone. So make sure that you're not only constantly communicating with your teammates and with yourself, but you're doing it in a super positive, reaffirming manner. And then lastly, which may be the toughest one, but also may be the most effective, is breath work and meditation. We typically consider meditation to be a little bit more of a passive thing where you're laying down, right? Your eyes are closed, you're breathing, and it can be, that's what most of it is, and I truly suggest that, and I'll explain why. But I also like to say that meditation can be within a game. Maybe it's during a timeout or a free throw. That quick meditation is focusing on your breath, right? slowing down your breath, feeling each breath, and bringing yourself back to the present moment. Focusing only on just that. Because if you're thinking about the future, right, what's gonna happen towards the end of the game or after the game, or the past, which is that last play, a made or missed shot, you can't get into the present. And what the flow state is, is the most present state you can possibly have. You're not thinking about anything but just hooping. In fact, you don't even really process your thoughts. That's what's so great about the flow state. So when you're able to meditate and bring yourself back present and solely focus on your breath, calm yourself down a little bit, this is gonna help you access that flow state better, especially when you combine it with the other tools. All right, so those are the tools that I would give you. Now I'm gonna give you super quick advice on how to train this and ways to incorporate this into your workout so that in a game, it's much easier to get to. So how I would say you train this, just get to it more in training. Easier said than done, but I'll explain how. Number one, the training has to be challenging, right? So you're working towards a certain goal. It's not just, all right, let me go out and make shots for three or four minutes in this drill. It's, all right, I have to make 10 shots in these next three minutes. So you're challenging yourself to beat a certain goal. 
This can be beating a score, this can be beating uh, a workout partner, this can be beating a certain level of quality from yourself, but you have to be working towards a goal on every single thing that you do. Number two, it's gotta be difficult, it can't be easy. Like we talked about, it has to be an optimal level of difficulty. And I think this is one that we struggle with a lot in our training, right? We're going through cones, never losing the ball. We're shooting shots from the same spot over and over again. It's not really difficult. And when it's not difficult, we can sit there and think about the past or think about the future or not be in the present moment. And this is gonna completely prevent us from getting into that flow state in our training. And then lastly, it's gotta be engaging, right? It's gonna be something that you're passionate about. Maybe it's not necessarily enjoying it, although I do think this is good. Fun workouts actually do scientifically release neurotransmitters that help you get into the flow state, but you just gotta be fully immersed in the workout. You can't be thinking about what's going on on your phone. You can't be thinking about what you're doing afterwards. You have to be fully engaged in the workout. You have to be passionate about the task that you're doing. If you can incorporate challenge, difficulty, and being fully engaged in every single one of your workouts, you're gonna access the zone more in these training sessions, which means it's gonna be much easier to access these in the game. And then lastly is just to learn yourself, right? You saw on most of these tools, everyone works differently, whether it's your mindset, whether it's your pregame routine, whether it's the training that you're doing, you gotta find what works for you. So take my word for it, but also take it with a grain of salt. Make sure to find exactly what works for you. And this is gonna take some trial and error, mold this to yourself, and then eventually you're gonna find it much, much easier to get into this zone. So as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helps you find that zone more. I think this can take you guys' career to the next level. Make sure to stay tuned for a lot more like this, workouts, et cetera. You guys know the deal. As always, appreciate you guys. See you next time.